It was a slightly undignified entrance for that most graceful of fighting machines. But this lovingly assembled replica Spitfire, a long way from home, is a belated thank you present to the people of a tiny African nation who came to Britain's aid when Britain needed it most. This was Britain's darkest hour and the people of this fantastic country, five and a half thousand miles away, gave us enough money to build 24 of these fantastic fighting machines. What more can say? For all the Spitfire's well-documented heroics, it is also part of an almost forgotten chapter of the Second World War. This Armistice Day in Lesotho, they remembered not just the money they gave, but the men they sent to a distant conflict. These Spitfires carried the name of Lesotho into many battles. It was an enormous contribution, but there were many men here asked to make an even greater sacrifice. There are more than a thousand names on Lesotho's war memorial. Friends of Kalia Molabatsi, some given little choice but to serve the empire. In those times we were all under British rule so we had to fight, he told me. But I was a young man and I was happy to go. In all, 20,000 answered the call to arms and campaigned through the Middle East, North Africa and Italy. Tuzo Holomese's photographs are fading but the memory of the horrors of the battle for Malta are sharp. Now they could see the town then start booming it. The following day, buildings were down. Then we had to go to remove the stones to pull out the bodies. The Spitfire will stand as a lasting monument to all those who suffered, a symbol of survival against the odds and a reminder that Britain never stood entirely alone. John Ray News at 10, Lesotho.